This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 3rd of February and let's get into it. A subdomain takeover was possible on Zomato, which is a website where you can discover food and restaurants around you. This subdomain takeover is not uh, your regular subdomain takeover because this was a zero day subdomain takeover and the researcher, well, he found this page that was hosting Freshdesk and he looked at a big repository saying which domains are vulnerable to subdomain takeover and which aren't and well Freshdesk was supposedly not vulnerable but he looked into it himself and through the UI of Freshdesk he couldn't take over this domain However, he captured that request in burp, changed it and sent it again and no server validation was being done and he took over the domain. So a huge, huge congratulations Mosec9 for this finding and for your 350 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 4th of February and let's get into it. An improper access control issue was found on GitLab. Now GitLab is a platform that facilitates the DevOps and they have a feature where your account can have a password that will expire. Now when your password is expired, you obviously have to set it again and whatnot. However, people with an expired password still had full access to the API, which is an issue. Now this issue was actually found in the past, had already been reported and been fixed However, in a further commit, this issue was then reintroduced, they accidentally removed the fix, and now it was submitted again by Joe X Carr. I hope you pronounced your name right, but uh, a huge congratulations to you and your 950 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 5th of February and let's get into it. An SSRF was found on Dropbox using a Google Drive integration because you can upload files directly from Google Drive onto Dropbox and Dropbox does that by first requesting information about the file to Google Drive. Google Drive will reply with this information in JSON and then it will download the file. However, this researcher found that he could inject a parameter that allowed Google Drive to immediately send the file over. Therefore, he could create a file that contains JSON that would be returned to Dropbox. Dropbox would then use the download URL that the researcher supplied and boom, an SSRF. This was really hard to explain in one minute, but bug disclosed guys, a huge congratulations on your 17,000 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 6th of February and let's get into it. A privacy oriented issue was found in the Brave browser. Now the Brave browser likes to always talk about how they are incredibly private and your privacy is very important to them, but they had an issue where your referrer header might get leaked in certain cases. Now the referrer header is a header that is being used to track where you come from to a website. So the website that you're going to can see where you came from and that is obviously used a lot for tracking purposes and whatnot. So the Brave browser says we want to remove that referrer header so that those, so that those websites cannot track that. However, they forgot to implement that when you're opening a new private window using Tor and that thus the website that you visit using that new private window using Tor could still have access to the referrer header, so to where you came from. So a huge congratulations Car Falcon on your 500 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 7th of February and let's get into it. Multiple account takeovers were found on TikTok and in specific on a TikTok SMB subdomain which is uh, the TikTok small to medium businesses profiles for ads and all that kind of stuff and two issues were found there. The first was an IDOR where this user, this researcher could just change the ID to a different ID and use that to change emails to change names and logos of any account that he wanted to. And secondly, he also found that uh, there was a lack of CSRF tokens, which allowed him to add an XSS payload to people's profile and also led to a account takeover. So a huge congratulations, Lucky13, for this finding and for your 1000 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap, it's the 8th of February and let's get 
into it. An issue was found in Ruby where cookie prefixes could be spoofed. Now you might be wondering, well, what is a cookie prefix? Well, this is a, a string that gets added to the front of a cookie and it adds some extra levels of security to your cookie. For example, if we set underscore underscore host dash as the prefix, then our cookie will only be accepted if it has the secure attribute set and some other things. However, in Ruby, the, when they're handling the cookies, when the cookies are being parsed, they are being HTML unescaped, which means that any HTML encoded characters will be returned into their normal character. But that is not the way that it's supposed to go. And in this way, when a researcher would, for example, submit the following cookie to the Ruby parser, it would be accepted, whereas it shouldn't. A huge congratulations, O underscore Q, on this finding and on your 2000 USD bounty. This is Bug Bounty Recap. It's the 9th of February and let's get into it. A reflected XSS was found on v Engel and Volker's technology. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but they are a real estate agency. And this researcher tried to log in onto their page and he noticed that there was a base64 encoded um, URL in that, in that login URL. So he went there and he noticed that it ended in a PHP file and then slash default dash SP. And that was a bit suspicious because this default dash SP value was also found on the page reflected. Now this researcher, it's the first logical step here is to check what happens if we insert some script tags there. So he inserted a script tag with an alert and he reloaded the page and boom. An alert popped up, so a huge congratulations, Blake underscore Shell, for this finding.